Hey, what's up guys? So my last video, I did a quick master using four free plugins and a spectrum analyzer. And um, a bunch of you guys wrote me asking uh, me to do a quick tutorial on using spectrum anal analyzers. You've seen me use them in a couple videos. I never really talk about it too much, but uh, maybe it's, uh, it's a good idea that I do. So uh, spec uh, spectrum analyzers basically give you a graphical representation of what's happening in your frequency range. Okay, why is this important? It's important because uh, many of us uh, being bedroom producers um, or having home studio setups, um, we don't have the greatest sounding rooms. And uh, you wouldn't believe how much of... Uh, a distortion you get and when I say distortion I don't mean like the guitar distortion I mean uh, distortion in um, the sound coming out of your speakers uh, you know I know my room is kind of shitty I'm assuming many of your rooms are kind of shitty too uh, unless you have an acoustically treated studio space you know you're kind of at the mercy of you know your room so basically um, a spectrum analyzer allows us to see graphically what's happening with our frequency range and I, I lean on spectrum analyzers quite a bit now uh, I had used one called spam or I'm sorry span from Voxango uh, I'll leave the free download uh, link uh, if you if you want to get it but I know many DAWs nowadays come with a spectral analysis built into every single individual track so you can use those if you don't have those or you prefer to use what I'm using, you can use that. But let's just jump right into it and, I'll, and I'm just simply going to explain to you guys why this is key and the best way to use this thing, okay? So I have a, a track loaded up in here. It's from an, art, uh, from an artist called Flume. I'm sure many of you guys have heard of this dude. He's, he's a, a young producer from Australia, pretty brilliant. Um, but here's, I have the span in here. Now, here's the thing. You guys have seen me use this with Pink Noise and I say, well, you know, Pink Noise is very similar to modern pop records, the frequency ranges. But instead of using pink noise all the time, what you might want to consider doing if you're going to start using a spectrum analyzer is find a track that you think sounds amazing, right? And use that track as a reference. So as you can see here, I like, you know, I like uh, the way Flume stuff sounds. And I just went ahead and in inserted one of his tracks into a session. And um, I just looped, uh, you know, basically a part that seems to be the loudest that has the most components in it. And the reason why I did that is because I want to see what his frequency curve looks like. This way I know that when I'm working in one of my sessions or I'm mastering it, I know that if my frequency analysis doesn't look like his, no matter what I think it sounds like in my room, I know that my ears are deceiving me and the sound is bouncing around my room and I'm totally getting a distorted representation of what's going on. Now, before I get into it, if you are gonna use this span um, spectrum analyzer, I just wanna bring up something real quick. Most analyzers uh, have a slope of three and I'll explain to you guys. If you go to the settings button right here, you see mine is set on three, but when you first get this thing, it actually defaults to 4.5, which makes your slope look a little bit different than what you would normally see in most DAWs. It doesn't really matter because no matter how your slope is curved, when you play a track back and you see the kind of curve it draws, it doesn't really matter how they initially slope slope that curve because you just want to make sure that the spectrum analyzer matches that of your reference track but i i like it on three it's a standard so i'm just going to put it on three and if you guys want to you you could do the same all right so it's on three and i'm going to ahead go ahead and play flume and let, let's see what let's see what that section looks like <laughs> So as typical with most of my explanations, I always tell you guys, you want it linear, you did see the bump on the kick. So basically, now that I know my track should look like that, I've got a few options. And those options are, while I'm still in the mix, I can push play and look at my spectrum analyzer and say something like, oh, you know, that bump, I should have more of a bump. Maybe I should turn up my kick or something. Or, oh, in the middle here, I notice he's straight. Right? That's kind of, it's pretty much covering up to this line. So if my slope is falling off down here, I know I should probably raise my hi-hats or some of the upper register instruments in my track. Uh, you know, guys, there isn't really much to say about this other than 
Use this as a visual guide. Find a track you like, okay, cue it up, find the busiest section, and run it through the spectrum analyzer and just really study the curve, you know, really study where does it bounce and all, you know, where's the bumps, where, where's, where's it straight, where does it roll off, you know, and, and then you could use your eyes to help your ears. And what you're going to find is as long as your curve matches their curve or the curve of your favorite artist or your reference track, what you're going to find is that, yeah, you know what, he had a louder kick and that's why his bump was up there. My bump was up there because my bass was maybe louder than my kick. The bottom line is those are all preference decisions. When you use this method of, I guess, confirming that you've got a balanced mix because that's what this is doing, what you're going to find is that, yeah, even though you've got a louder bass and he's got the louder kick, you're still going to have a nice balance because, uh, you know, whether you want a louder kick or a louder bass is only a preference. Um, it gets a little funky when your mix is not imbalanced, and this will ensure that your mixes do stay imbalanced. If you guys have any questions, post them uh, below, but for the most part, I hope this is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, got some ideas uh, queued up for next week. Going to make a couple more videos coming up here. You guys enjoy your weekend, and I'll catch you.